The most exciting element of this project, why I'm so enthused and so honored to be able to have had this opportunity, is that where I'm standing is in the context of an extraordinary collection. The idea of the artist-built environment, the institutional support of artists' imagination is just extraordinary. These projects all started as an idea and the result is something that is physical and functional and art. And to take an idea out of someone's brain and put it on paper and to put it into like a factory setting and to maintain the visual aesthetic and the intention behind that work is all part of what my job has been throughout this process. There are so many components to each of the washrooms and each one of them has had so much effort and energy and care put into them that I think to choose something that I'm the most proud of is a really sort of unfair <laughs> and complicated thing. I'm proud of everything that's in the washrooms and each for a different reason. I think, you know, there are some things that I'm proud of because of the relationships that were built during the production of the thing. There are things that I'm proud of because I learned something during the creation of it. There's things that I'm proud of because of how they relate to the artist's intention or idea. There are so many things that I'm proud of about the washrooms. So I started with the premise of Art Preserve, which is this, this understanding of the preservation and the conservation and the awareness of large works of art and environments that were saved and are now available for the general public to view. And so that really anchored my thoughts around what I would propose for this particular building. The, the word preservation became really important to me. So I describe Wild Matter as an artist-made washroom that investigates the connection between cultural preservation and the need for ecological preservation by depicting over 1,200 species of Sheboygan County flora and also kind of alluding to this age of mass extinction that we're now in. It incorporates specimen sheets of plants that are no longer found here because they are extirpated or extinct. The flora is juxtaposed with the human touch or the human mark by the glaze application in the fixture. So it's really kind of a call to remembrance or to action to really speak to the environment that we're living in today. When I talk about the washroom, I speak to not only what is recognizable, that would be the gingham. We all know what gingham pattern looks like. We all see it in different aspects of our life. Maybe it's in our kitchen, maybe it's in our closet, maybe it's you know at the big box store. So talking about that which we know and also talking about that which we don't know, and that would be abstraction. So different kinds of patterns and thinking about uh, repetition. So in short, thinking about how one can stretch the familiarity and the conventions of a hygienic public washroom and have it be interpreted and contemplative in different ways. So when I was asked to develop a proposal, I was thinking quite a lot about the ethics and the values of maintenance, what it means to keep a public space clean, who keeps that public space clean, the various breakdowns of labor in any institution. And because I was working in the foundry as an artist in residence at the time, really thinking about a particular woman, her name was Yenny, and she would come in and clean up the studios on a day-to-day -day basis. And we would talk and she wouldn't know what was going on. And so she was really the inspiration with thinking about ideas around maintenance, around diversity, thinking about the population of any, any given institution. So I often think that um, all of this honors her to a certain degree. I'm hoping that the viewer will take the opportunity to interpret what these forms mean. And these forms can, again, be political or they can be about beauty, they can you know, be about taste. So active interpretation, hopefully, of things that we take for granted. The project here at Kohler was proposed 
uh, after my partner Paul Swenbeck and I did an exhibition at the Arts Center. That exhibition was called Out Out Phosphine Candle. And we were lucky enough from that exhibition to have Kohler acquire one of the central elements of that exhibition. So the proposal was, is it possible to shrink down that element, which was, you know, the size of a large room into a washroom? In coming up with the design of the actual washrooms, we wanted the two washrooms to feel completely different. And you know, we definitely wanted one to work really well with the idea of the Aurora Borealis and the basalt ice columns that we included in the work. So we kind of, you know, immediately came up with the idea of sort of, could we make in tile an idea of an ice cave? Make a uh, washroom sort of feel almost like Superman's secret lair. I'm interested to hear what, how other people <laughs> see that space, but the idea was like an ice cave. And then we wanted the other washroom to look just completely different, but also to have different views of the original installation so that you wouldn't even necessarily know that either bathroom was looking at the same installation. So for the second washroom, we really wanted to have sort of a closer look at, you know, the magic of the Aurora Borealis to make it as colorful and prismatic as we could. So those were the, the ideas. And also to add a little witchiness. <laughs> so it's funny working on a washroom. I do really love the idea of, you know, the unexpected. People sort of expect to see an outstanding washroom here at Kohler, but I like the idea of, you know, changing people's perceptions and perspectives of what a washroom can be.